Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Institute. And today I'm going to be talking to you about lifestyle modifications for polycystic kidney disease. We talked about this in a previous video a few years ago, and I'll share that link for you up here. But there have been so many new developments in polycystic kidney disease, and I thought I'll follow up on our last video where we talked about the genetic of kidney disease by talking about an update on lifestyle modification for polycystic kidney disease. So let's do this. So as I mentioned last time, polycystic kidney disease is the most common inherited kidney disease affecting one in 800 people throughout the world. And it's a group of disorders that can be either autosomal dominant, where 50% of the offsprings can be affected, or it is more recessive where 25% of the offsprings are affected, as we talked about in the previous video. And the basic problem is that there is a mutation that lead to a problem in, a, in areas of the tubules of the kidneys, and that lead to increased proliferation of the cells and formation of cysts, and these cysts with time gradually compress the normal kidney tissues, leading to progressive kidney disease and kidney failure with time. So we talked about those two proteins that are produced by those major genes that are affected by polycystic kidney disease, which are polycystine 1 and polycystine 2. And the current theory, and when we talked about the cellular level, what's happening on the cellular level is that the current theory is that those genes or a mutation of these genes can lead to a decrease in calcium inside the tubular cells. And we know that calcium is important for many cellular function inside the cells. So decrease in calcium inside the cells can lead to problem in cellular function. And we really want to focus on two major pathways in this video. One is the cyclic AMP pathway, and the other one is the mTOR pathway. So cyclic AMP is one of those messengers that kind of conduct signal in the cell. So the cell has a surface where you have some kind of receptors where hormones or other proteins can come to the cells and bring them a message. And that message is translated inside the cells through a series of pathways that end up in the nucleus of the cells and leading to production or lack of production of proteins. So cyclic AMP pathway <clears throat> in normal cells does not lead to increased to high proliferation, cell proliferation, or cyst formation. But when you have decrease in calcium in the cells, then the cyclic AMP pathway will be amplified and that will lead to increased cell proliferation and cyst formation. So that would happen on one side of the equation inside the cell. Now, we talked about how decreased calcium can also be decreased inside the mitochondrial cells and can shift the energy production into a critical dependence on glucose or sugar. The other pathway that we talked about is the mTOR pathway or the mammalian target of rapamycin. So we know about these from medication that can be used for transplant medication and inhibit these messenger. And mTOR by itself can lead to increased cell proliferation and dedifferentiation. So if you have an activated mTOR pathway, you will have increased cell proliferation. So here we see the polycystine 1 and polycystine 2 and the decrease in cellular calcium and activation of the cyclic AMP and the mTOR pathways. Now, when we think about lifestyle modification, we want to think about what activate cyclic AMP and what activate mTOR. So what we want to do is to accomplish things that don't activate or, or inhibit them 
or suppressant. So when we talk about activating cyclic AMP, we talked about vasopressin. We talked about that in a previous video, how vasopressin is produced by increased sodium level in the blood, which indicate that there is decreased water intake. So increasing water intake can decrease vasopressin, and that can lead to decreased cyclic AMP inside the cells. Now, caffeine can also be associated with activation of cyclic AMP, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the parathyroid hormone, which is one of those bone mark, uh, markers of bone health in relation to the kidneys, I call, that's what I tell my patients, because it really affect calcium level in the blood or, or in, stimulated by calcium level in the blood. And vitamin D, we know if you have vitamin D deficiency, that will activate parathyroid hormone and that can lead to activation of cyclic AMP. Prostaglandin 2, uh, E2, prostaglandin E2 can also increase the activation of cyclic AMP. And we know that that is usually associated with inflammation. And epinephrine, the fight or flight hormone, stress can also activate cyclic AMP. I'm not coming up with these from my for my own, these are all backed by research. So, so when we talk about water, so how much water we need to drink if you have, if someone has polycystic kidneys, how much water they should drink. So we know that drinking a large amount of water have been found to significantly decrease the progression of kidney disease in studies. But the optimal amount of water that a person should drink depends on the amount of salt and food that they eat what we call solute. So protein or other food that we eat and salt are solute, produce solute that the kidneys have to get rid of and they have to get rid of with water. So that translates in the urine into what we call urine osmolality. So urine osmolality is a measure of solute and water in the urine. And the simplest way to assess what, how much a person should drink is by measuring a 24-hour urine osmolality. And from that, we can calculate the amount of water that a person needs. And also, you can do a spot morning, first morning urine osmolality by just a urine, one urine specimen and try to get a urine osmolality of less than 280 in the morning. Now, we have a calculator in our uh, website. You can go to the website is in the bottom here, the, that link. And I'll put that link in the description of this video. If you put the result of your 24 hour urine osmolality results, we will tell you the amount of water that you should be drinking in a single day. Now, coffee in lab, they found that caffeine increased cyclic AMP production. But clinical trials showed that caffeine intake was not associated with kidney size or the progression of polycystic kidney So bottom line, we don't know, but we recommend that you drink coffee in moderation if you have polycystic kidney And we talked about vitamin D and we talk, we, we want to target the vitamin D level of 50 for patients with you know, polycystic kidney is Actually, almost everybody should have target vitamin D of 50 to 60. And definitely stress management, meditation, or so on. And then controlling inflammation. And we talk about plant-dominant diet that is rich in, rich in omega-3 fatty acids and polynutrients. And you can talk about curcumin, turmeric, turmeric, generic, uh, ginger, boswellia, and things like that that can be helpful in managing inflammation. Now, Switching gear to talk about the mTOR pathway. So mTOR pathway, again, that is target of rapamycin, which we hear about and we talk about transplant medications. This can lead to increased cell proliferation and faster progression of polycystic kidney disease. And it is really sensitive to glucose. And there have been uh, now ongoing trial that look at this AMPK, uh, which can be inhibited by metformin, 
and how it can be can affect mTOR pathway and lead to decreased protein synthesis and decreased cell proliferation. But also dietary restrictions, exercise, we talked about metformin, and time-restricted diet and carbohydrate restrictions, such as ketogenic diet, can also inhibit the mTOR pathway. So there are many other inhibitors of mTOR pathway that are natural. People who love to hear about natural treatments. There's epigenin, which is available in or uh, oranges, apples, cherries, and grapes, and broccoli. Curcumin, we talked about that. Fisetin, which is in strawberries and apple and persimmons and onions. Indoles, which is in uh, cruciferous vegetables. Isoflavones, such as soybeans. Quercetin, which I don't really recommend for a patient with advanced kidney disease. Reservatrol, uh, tocotrienol which is one of the members of the vitamin E super family. But, you know, people talk about supplement with, with natural supplements and stuff like that. But I want to say food is medicine. So you go back here, you look at all these food, they're all plant-based stuff. So I'll keep that here for you to watch it a little more but these are good stuff for you to include in your diet. And that makes it a plant, super plant dominant diet. Now, definitely there are pharmaceuticals. There's tovaptan, which is approved for polycystic kidney disease, which is a, an inhibitor of, or um, antagonist of vasopressin and can be used for patients with faster progression of polycystic kidney disease. It's actually approved only for patients with faster progression of polycystic kidney disease. And there are some liver toxicity associated with this. So patients who are on tolvaptan should be getting checked for liver function tests on a regular basis. Metformin is currently being studied, uh, as I mentioned. And definitely blood pressure management is super important for patients with polycystic kidney disease and first line of management is ACE, ACE inhibitors or ARBs. And we'd like to currently, with the current data, we'd like to avoid calcium channel blockers as they have been used in studies to imitate the conditions associated with polycystic kidney disease. So calcium channel blockers are going to decrease the calcium inside the cells and can cause the same things that can lead to faster progression of polycystic kidney disease. So there are many ongoing stu studies right now, people who love research. There are studies in looking at water intake and progression of kidney disease. And this is not really life lifestyle modification, but metformin is being studied uh, in comparison to tolvaptan in the management of polycystic kidney disease. Time-restricted feeding and ketogenic diet are also being studied in curcumin. Study has been, should be finished by now and we're waiting for it to be released. So I hope you like this video. If you liked it, make sure you follow us on Facebook at nkidney. We're also on Instagram at integrative kidney and integrative kidney solutions on YouTube, obviously, and www.inkidney.com.